Welcome to EC Elimu, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the previous lesson, we discussed heat transfer, and we looked at the three modes of heat transfer, that is conduction, convection, and radiation. Then we narrowed down our discussion to conduction, where we realized that we have two mechanisms of conduction, where we said one is vibration of atoms, which can vibrate and conduct heat. Then we talked about a movement of free electrons, which can move and conduct heat. And then we said those two mechanisms are the one which determines or which is used to classify materials in terms of good conductors and poor conductors. So in this lesson, we are going to talk about classification of materials in terms of conduction. And my name is Albert. I hope you are going to enjoy the lesson. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to classify materials in terms of wood conductors and poor conductors. Then demonstrate uh, an experiment which you can perform to distinguish between a wood and a poor conductor of heat. So how many classes of materials do we have in terms of conduction? We have only two types of classes in terms of conduction. And the first class of material uh, is good conductors. And in good conductors, we are going to realize that they possess the two mechanisms of heat conduction, that is free electrons. They have both free electrons and then they have vibration of atoms. So good conductors possess the two mechanisms, but for poor conductors only have, or they only depend on vibration of atoms. They don't have free electrons. So in this case, their conductivity will be very slow. That's why we call them poor conductors of heat. So we are going to begin with good conductors of heat and we are going to define good conductors as materials that can allow heat to pass through them. So if you have a material which can allow heat to pass through them, when you introduce heat at one point, this is heat moving through that point. So if you introduce heat here, if a material allows the heat to move to the other end through it, then that material is a good conductor. And we are going to see that most metals lies under good conductors. Now, what makes good conductors good conductors of heat? Well, as we mentioned earlier, these materials have free electrons. They have free electrons in addition to vibration of atoms. So they have both free electrons which can move and conduct electricity and they also depend on vibration of atoms and this one make them a better conductors of heat so examples of materials which can be which can be classified under good conductors is a material like copper silver aluminium brass mercury iron and zinc and in short all other metals, all other metals are good conductor of heat. The second category of materials is a poor conductor of heat. And poor conductors of heat, most of the time we call them insulators or insulators. Now these materials, they do not allow heat to pass through them. So for poor conductors, they don't allow readily, they don't readily allow heat to pass through them. And why don't they allow heat to pass through them? So it means if you have a material here, you introduce heat at this point here, then this heat cannot go to the other end. It cannot move to the other end. So it means this one is a poor conductor. Now, why do poor conductors don't conduct heat 
The reason why they don't conduct heat is because they only depend solely on collision of atoms. They only depend on the vibration of these atoms. And vibration of these atoms will take long for all the atoms to vibrate with their neighbors so that the heat can reach the other point. And in fact, if it takes long, this material will gain excess heat or temperature and then it will change state now from solid to liquid. So most uh, poor conductors of heat, when you try to insert more heat on them, they will melt from solid to liquid, even change to gaseous state. So in this case, they only depend on vibration of atoms, vibration of atoms, which makes them poor conductors of heat. So examples of this material is wood, air, water, rubber, plastic, and glass. However, I want you to be very keen because these materials, it's not that they cannot conduct heat at all. They conduct heat because they have vibration of atoms. Only that they conduct heat in a very poor way, very slowly. So don't say insulators don't conduct heat. No, you will be wrong. Insulators, all poor conductors, they conduct heat, but at a very slow manner. So in this case, you need to know that because we are going to learn that the glass, you can heat substances using a glass beaker. So the heat must first pass through the glass beaker into the substance. So it means that the glass beaker has transferred heat. So these poor conductors, they conduct heat, but in a very poor way. So we have a set of experiments which we can perform to test whether a material is a wood conductor of heat or a poor conductor of heat. And what you do, you take two pieces of wood, that is one piece of wood and another piece of iron of equal length and diameter. And then you maintain them uh, using a piece of paper or a sheet of paper. As you can see on the screen, this side here, we have wood. And then the other side, we have iron. And then in between here, in between here, these two materials, are maintained together using a piece of paper. Then now what you do, you introduce a flame where these two materials are, are meeting where we have a paper. And what you realize after some time, after you, have, you burn them for some time, the region where you have wood will be blackened and then the region where you have iron will not be blackened. Let me redraw this one down here. So if you have a section where you have a paper like this one, and then to this side, you add a wood like this one, then to the other side, you add a iron. Let me draw it like that. This is iron, this is wood. And then in between here, they are meeting. Then one side now where you have wood will be blackened. And then this one will be blackened. Then this one will not, will not be blackened. Now the reason why the side where you have wood is blackened is because immediately you heat, as you heat this one here, let's say this is our flame here. This is the flame here. When you heat this paper and the wood will gain or will attain some heat. Now since poor, wood is a poor conductor, it will not conduct this heat away. All the heat, heat will be concentrated here. Heat is concentrated at the paper. Then in that case, the wood, all the paper will be changed to ash or it will be blackened. But on the other side here, where you have iron, iron is a wood conductor. So when this uh, flame produces a uh, heat, it reaches the paper, which is on the side of iron. Iron is a good conductor of heat. It will conduct some heat away from it. And therefore, the concentration of heat on this paper will be very low. That's why the paper is not blackened. So that marks the end of our lesson today. In the next lesson, we will discuss 
factors affecting conduction of heat in materials.